the shift, that elusive concept of our early adolescent years. It's shrouded in dread, anticipation, excitement, embellishment and exaggeration. Given that the shift is a slang term, pinning down an exact meaning can prove difficult. The word's origin is unknown, but one thing is for certain. It is firmly established in the lexicon of most Limerick people today, and its authenticity goes uncontested. Up in the gob, uh, meeting. I'm mauling. Uh... The name for kissing in Poland is potawunek. Lip lock, a mouth massacre if it goes bad, I guess. That's it, two of them. Two shift basically. Scoring is a real quirk one, I think. Speaking, French kissing, snogging, tongue sucking, going away with tongue tangled, smooching. Smooching, smooching is it's more for a dance though. Yeah. Smooching, smooching, whatever. But for kissing, the official word would be suzama. Mouth riding? Oh, this is kind of weird, but I want to use three fan fiction if there was like kissing in a story, it would call a line. And like if there was more, it would be <laughs> Shifting would probably have to be the most popular word for me, nothing else. Shifting. 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 The shift. Shifting. No, not really. So. Does the use of the word shifting signify a removal from the romantic, idealised lover's kiss? Well, I suppose this all depends on who you ask. What the shift means to me is marling some young one. Yeah, meeting someone on a night out that you don't regularly see and shifting them. Shift is you meet someone, you chat for five minutes. That's a long time to be chatting for the shift, let's be honest. And then you just go in for it and kiss them. <laughs> well, for me, the shift is not just a peck, it's more of a, an intense type, maybe a bit of tongue action. How was your take on the shift? Um, the shift always meant, okay, but if you have to French kiss, yeah, deep throat, course, yeah. and if it was good, a finger. That's it's only just... natural, it's pure natural. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. No, it's actually, you love it. What does the shift mean to me? Well, I guess the shift used to mean a lot more. It was like if you were, if you were like 18 or 19, you went down and you got the shift too. It was like big success. But now it's like, you know, if you go home to the lads, I live with three lads. So if you go home and say, how'd you get on with your wine? Say, you got the shift, they're a bit like, oh. <laughs> shift to me is basically, it's not with a boyfriend anyway. It's to do with somebody you kind of met somewhere and you just decided to go in for it. A night out usually isn't good unless I've got at least one shift or even a number like that. If I get more than one shift, I'm singing until about six o'clock in the morning. You know, it is very, it's very personal. The shift, yeah, or the kiss, whichever way you want to put it. Yeah, like you can kiss your mother, but you don't shift your mother. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> or if you do, <laughs> there's something seriously wrong. Jesus and again, horses for courses. Sorry. A logical place to begin our exploration would be with one's first shift. I had my first kiss when I was like nearly 14 and I wish I hadn't because I didn't like it at all. It was absolutely awful. My first shift was, was about 14, 15. Can't remember who she was. And it was out in my back garden in the bushes <laughs> and uh, hiding from my parents, obviously. And uh, it wasn't too bad, like it was grand for the first shift. But, um... I was great with young fella, it was my first boyfriend and he was the same age, he was 19 and he was a lovely boy. He was, you know, he was a nice young fella. And when I went to secondary school, everyone wanted to get a shift and you, you, had to, you didn't get a shift, you were frigid. So, okay. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out we were both. Um, we had our first shift, it was in the summer, I was probably 12, 13, because we were pure innocent. And we just like went to the back of the post office and we're like, yeah, okay, let's do this. And we just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> For like 10 minutes and then we went home. That was it. Well, I was luckily, lucky enough to have gotten the shift for the first time ever in about fourth class. I remember I went to school in a primary school in the country and it was out in a field with two other people who were shifting each other. Pretty awkward and probably a bit weird looking back, but. So I didn't really live the kind of late frigid years. 
I was basically, I was in a, I lost my frigidity early. <laughs> I was 12 or so, and it happened to be that, you know, my mum told me that you have to be at home 10 o'clock or 11, something like that, in the evening. No staying out longer. And um, I just met that girl, um, and we were then getting on, and we, we, we just happened, there happened to be my little brother, two years younger, happened to be with us, um, and he was sitting in the park then on the next bench so we started started uh, shifting then and I think it went on about 45 minutes to an hour and I remember him sitting there and barely crying because he knew that he, we were going to get beating and him as well because of me. Uh, I usually go about getting a shift, it's usually a day process. I'd start off going to the gym but the, when I go to the gym it wouldn't be a set program, it would usually just be arms and chest to make sure they're pumped for that night. Then I'd meet the lads, just get ready basically. I wouldn't put on a, little things like I wouldn't put on a t-shirt before I went out. I'd literally put it on just before I get the taxi so it's nice and tight before I get out, stuff like that. Gel the hair. It's all kind of simple really like, but I learned off a friend I used to work with that celery supposedly turns women on if a guy eats a lot of celery. So I started eating that a lot <laughs> and it worked so. Uh, usually I'd put some cologne behind the back of my ears just in case they need to lean in. If they lean in and whisper in your ear, they're going to smell something nice, so that'll turn them on even more usually. So. Best shift was probably a girl just in a local club in Icon here where I thought I'd never ever get to shift her. And one night randomly when I didn't think I would, but I did all my usual tweaks and tricks before I went out and I, I got her basically. I was very happy after. Uh, my worst would probably be at this house party I went to just by accident and it was this guy who was pretty hot like maybe most people wouldn't think he was hot but I was kind of weird taste and he had really big teeth but and when we shifted he like opened his mouth really wide and his teeth were like here <laughs> and it was just like spit everywhere and when we came apart there was like this trail of like spit between us. I um, was kissing a girl one night, we were at a party um, at her house, we were having drinks at her house and everyone else left except for um, me and her and we were kissing on the couch and I went to kind of take off her bra um, with all the subtle expertise of the 17 year old I was so it was like a chimpanzee trying to escape a zoo fire, you know, just madly going at it and she told me to take it slow but I kind of misread the situation and started just moving really slowly in the kiss rather than taking it slow with the brad. Um, I didn't realize until I was walking home that she was probably suggesting we might have sex later but um, opportunity miss. Also in Cork um, in this pub called the Brogue and I kind of used a line but this is when I had my tongue pierced okay so this guy came up to me and he had two lip rings right um, and I was like oh you know I was like oh I have my tongue pierced and I was like it's a really good shift and then we basically just shifted. That's my worst line, but it worked. My best shift, it was three o'clock in the morning. Uh, me and a few friends had just come out of a club in Galway. We went down to the Chinese to get some cheap bottles of wine at three in the morning. We went to the Spanish Arch. We were drinking in the middle of the summer, drunk off our faces. I was splitting a bottle of wine with a guy and we ended up shifting. And I think it was the location more than anything that made it better. Alcohol probably the most widespread source of the average Irish citizen's iniquity and amoral behaviour. Is the culture that surrounds drinking linked to the acquisition of the shift? Consider colloquialisms such as Dutch courage and beer goggles that are familiar to us all. Curious to find out alcohol's relationship to the shifting process, we put this to the people. Uh, yeah, I think drink has a lot to do with going out getting the shift. Like, if I didn't drink, I wouldn't actually be going out getting the shift. I think it's much harder to get it in a sober environment. Even if you go out sober, you might actually find it easier, but I just haven't taken that risk. I've never had, I don't think I've had the courage to shift a girl sober. Uh, at that time now, you, would be, you wouldn't be left out, uh, out any fair at night until you'd be about 18 or 19. And it was dense halls that was there. You wouldn't ever go into a pub. A woman was never seen in a pub or anything that way those days. The amount of times I've been out and I've been drunk and I've got the shift and I don't remember and then someone tells me the next day and I don't have a clue and I'm like, I don't remember that. I was at a party before 
uh, and I, I came home the next day like with my neck like covered in like hickeys and I don't remember getting it at all. There's this pub in Cork called The Wash and they have this table where all the girls like stand on it and they dance and it's, I guess it's a bit prostitute but all these guys like stand at the edge of the table and they're like, well come on down to me, you know, basically sort of thing. We need a drink for the shift. The Dutch courage has always been there. I'm not saying everyone needs it, but it has certainly helped. You know, the main reason for people going to a club and getting drunk is two hours drinking. And then, because the slow set is gone, it means you've half an hour to get whatever's left that hasn't already left. But I don't think it's just Ireland and drinking culture and snogging. I think mm. that goes on across the world. Yeah. You know, you go to any bar, it happens two in the morning, and there's people, you know, they're getting the drink in and yeah. they're getting their shift on. As well as the beer goggles always have to get the shift. Oh god, beer goggles. Someone that might not have been in your eye at half past ten at night can suddenly look very, very attractive at quarter yeah. past two in the morning. Oh, I definitely think drinking has everything to do with the shift, especially for young people because, you know, personally I've never just shifted someone that I've just met while sober. I mean, you know, I've never been in Tesco and said, you know, can I buy you a banana? Let's, you know, and then, and then shifted someone. Ah, there was no alcohol much in my day, yeah, in the, the young life. People wouldn't have money if I was in. It was a thing they didn't do, you know. But it is a pity today now, there is a lot of young people and, and they're drinking a lot. But yeah, I do think they are definitely related, because a lot of people just don't have the kind of, the courage to like, go up to someone, because it's hard. Stepping outside of any pre-established heteronormative boundaries, the ostensible gay shift becomes our next port of call. We first met in Galway Pride, at Galway Pride, I think. Yeah. And next thing I saw this vision <laughs> coming in behind them. I was like, oh God, who's he now? I didn't see him before. Watch her. Watch her, basically. <laughs> and what was your first line to me? I, I don't know. Basically, he shifted anyway without saying any more. It was just like, Lob the gob, that's another word for shifting. I suppose the big difference between like kissing a guy and a girl, guys are more likely to try and play Thompson hockey. You're also more likely to end up with beard rash afterwards. The differences I would say, I wouldn't necessarily say they're cultural differences be between the way gay society and straight society go out and, and meet people. The gay society, and when I say gay, I mean gay, lesbian, whatever, everybody else included, um, is al has always been seen to be more promiscuous and more um, slutty, shall we say, for a word. From my experience of going to straight nightclubs over the last couple of years, I don't think that's the case at all. I think it's pretty much everyone is out for anything they're going to get. Well, I have a few friends that are gay and I would have no problem with them kissing in front of them. Like, everyone has to kiss sometime, you know? Same-sex couple shifting doesn't bother me, but I've... I think the first time I ever saw two guys shifting was in uh, the U.S. Student Union and I guess that was like not a night out scenario. So when I saw two guys shifting on the couch, it was a little bit of a, oh, you know, never seen that before. I think um, in Ireland that people are still very hesitant to show affection in public. I suppose certainly growing up gay, um, we you'd still be very conscious even as an adult like going down the street like you know it wouldn't necessarily feel natural to hold hands there's things that you kind of don't do because it's kind of trained in your brain you don't do that in public in case of someone starting shit or whatever um, so I'd like to think that we've relaxed in some way about that you know being gay or whatever you just have more I think you were more kind of tuned in. There's cer certain kind of behaviours and things you're not going to do. Like, it's different on, like, on the day of Pride, like, no one gives a crap, but, you know, you're not going to just march into town and start eating the face of someday or, I don't know. Yeah, I, you know, from my <coughs> point of view, I've, I've never had any hassle, but it's like, you're not going to be going down outside the icon at half past one in the morning and slogging the face of some fella in the middle of the street. Now, maybe you should be able to do that, but you can't. You know, if you saw two lads here hang off each other and there wasn't 40 pints of liquor involved, you'd be like, they're gay, you know, get them. Having established that shifting is undeniably a rite of passage in an individual's life, one's curiosity becomes piqued as to whether or not shifting habits change as a person matures. 
We took a look at how the ritualistic element of meeting a potential shifting partner has changed over the years. And we're, we're kind of still of a, a generation of people that growing up, um, we probably didn't see our parents kiss that often in public. True. And our grandparents definitely not. Um, I just, I think once you hit like, I don't know, 60, I think, then you should just stop it. Just become like asexual or something, you know? Just, just not do it anymore. Not kiss anyone, just grow old and have a nice time. But, you know, just don't do that. But, My name is Phyllis and I'm 73. We wouldn't, we wouldn't buy boys at all when Irene was going to school. You wouldn't be bothered with them. Why are you to say to them, you old yoke? But that was the way we got on, you know. And um, But even after, when they, when they grew up and they were the same age as you, and they'd meet you in a hall, you'd be over flying to dance with you. To be different then, you know. Do you remember when we were going to school, they'd say to you, and you were a holy flight and you'd give me a kick in the shin one day. <laughs> you know? Now, the other thing that I noticed, and I, now you mightn't, because I'd be um, <coughs> here too older than you, uh, but you know when you used to go to nightclubs in my day, there was always the slow set. There might be a slow set in the middle of the night or towards oh, the yeah. end of the night. And that was the time you'd see everyone getting the shift on. You'd see couples outside slow dancing and necking on or, you know, tongues flapping or whatever they're doing. You don't have the slow set anymore in nightclubs. Yeah. So you, the, the, that element of it is gone. So basically what you have now is like half past two in the morning. It's like, anyone just kiss me. And that's the, men, the women, not the men. They know you weren't from around. They'd be mad to dance with you. Oh, there's a girl now we never saw before. So they'd come up and ask you to dance. And they'd throw a few, you'd be fed a plane and melodian and accordion, and they'd throw in a few coppers. So we wouldn't have money that time, like, you know, throw in four or five pins to him. Pennies that day. And we'd go out and dance the sit. And the next man would ask you to dance, he'd throw in a few more pins to your man. And um, that's the way to be going on, like. All these things died away again. There's, there's not any such thing you've been anymore, like. Right? Uh, the dance hall started closing down, and it was mostly in the, the pubs did the down. dancing and eating. Well, I never met anyone that I wanted to marry, or uh, anyone that wanted to marry me, I would marry them, and vice versa, do you know. Tell you the truth, I only had three boyfriends all together. And the three of them were dead in bed. I saw their I I saw their um, anniversaries of young the paper, I thought it was the first guy I was great with. His name was Biggie Higgins. But I was sorry when I saw, you know, he died his, uh, his anniversary was on the paper. I said, Oh gee, she got that Biggie Higgins. So, there you have it. The lid has been lifted on the Pandora's box that encompasses the shift. As the previous footage has undoubtedly proven, its cultural significance is not to be sniffed at. The shift gets us talking, it fires us up, gets adrenaline flowing and brings us together, literally. The shift is as varied as the weather. It can be hot, exciting, disappointing, unpredictable, boring, or just plain wet. So whether you're still in pursuit of that perfect shift or whether you've attained it with that special someone, we hope that this documentary has inspired you to go out there and make shift happen. I love shifting. Oh, I love it. I, I live to shift. I, um, <laughs> if it, it just doesn't happen enough, really. I think if more people gave me a chance, they'd find that I'm an actually an excellent shifter. I think. I mean, I think you should get it. Well, I don't know, I'm an advocate for getting the shift. Um, I just, kissing is probably my favourite thing to do in the world. I love it. I could do it for hours. <laughs> That's not what to do. Disgusting. <coughs> Disgusting. I love shifting. Yeah, I love shifting too. Are you well? Cause you are looking well To be on a sign, too drunk to even tell And I don't care if you have your boyfriend with ya One thing is certain tonight, I'm gonna shift ya And I don't need to know your name Those are not the rules of this game Be on the lookout cause I'm on
Starship Patrol Someone call me Han cause I'm on a roll Now I don't want a relationship I just want to know that tonight I got to shift